Hey everyone, I am The Amazing Fleck, and today I'd like to review my Focus Mini video projector made by Acaso. I'm not one to pro any brands or anything like that. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm not interested in sponsoring anybody. I've been looking at different projector screens for quite some time, and my needs aren't that extravagant. I don't need something that is extra, extra fancy with high, high resolution and with 10,000 billion lumens. I just needed something that could project something onto a surface so I can uh, draw artwork through a projector screen and blow it up larger. So, so far I've only fired up this unit a couple times and I'm pretty impressed with it. I projected on my wall the night that I got it and then I went outside and played around with it on different places, uh, different walls, different surfaces, just to get a feel for how it functions in various levels of light and on different textured surfaces. So far, I think the best surface to work with is just a flat wall. Uh, I haven't played around with any proper projector screens yet because I haven't gotten that far. But one thing I do like is there's a menu on here and this menu allows you to adjust for what color wall you are projecting on. So I can project on my light yellow wall or a white wall or a pink wall. I think there's like blue and other ones in there. But we'll go through that menu and we'll see them. The inputs for this device are wonderful too. So right here we have an SD slot where I have a card with a video preloaded on it for this video. And we have your standard headphone jack right there for your audio. We have a proper HDMI port, which is pretty rad, so we can plug that directly into a computer or something else that uses HDMI so we can project it through this little guy here. There's a USB port as well for information, I think also for charging. Then of course right here is your micro USB charging port. So you can keep this thing running while you're running it by plugging into a wall charger or into a portable battery of some kind. On the other side we have a power bank mode switch, which switches it over, and yeah, and it'll turn on indicator lights to show you how much battery is left inside of the unit. And you can charge your phone off of this unit actually too, so if you plug in the USB here, this is power out, into the USB on your phone, whether you use Type-C or an iPhone or whatever, it'll keep your phone charging while you're using your phone to stream through it either wirelessly or through a hard connection. Pretty cool unit so far, I like it. So this is power bank mode over here, and to turn it on, we want to switch this all the way over and hold it down for a while until we get a nice green light that comes on on one of the sides. Where does that come on? Uh, it comes on right in the back here. This green light shows us that it's on right now, and uh, it looks like it's firing up, so let's uh, put the old tripod on there. There's a hair. I wonder where this hair comes from. I have a cat. I have no idea. Oh, and it's firing up over there already, so... Oh, you can see it hitting me up here. We have all these lights on. I have a ring light. I have a couple of soft boxes. I have the, the light from my, my lamp up there, and it looks like we're actually getting a picture. So another really cool thing about this unit is that it has automatic keystone correction. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. But for right now, we need a magical scene transition to get these lights off. Wow, that got dark quick. I'll get out of the way so we can watch the movie. So you'll see here the automatic keystone correction. If I raise it up, you see how that rectangle corrects itself automatically? I'm not doing any button or anything with that. I'm going to put it up a little bit though so it gets off of the old Paisley couch. And I'll move the camera so you can see a little better. There we go. Now I'm using this remote control right here. I don't know if you can see it very well. There you can see it better in the, in the light of the projector screen. Sorry about the sound levels. I'm really close to the mic. Let's focus this first. Let's crisp this up. On the side of the projector near the front, on the left side, is a focus. There we go. Let's sharpen that up a bit. Very good. That looks a lot better. So we have a menu of five options. We have Easy Wire and we have Easy Cast. Both of these menus just more or less give you instructions on how you can download an app and use the app for streaming or for a hard line, which is Easy Wire, and then Easy Cast is for your wireless connection. And of course we have HDMI and then we have Settings as well as media. We'll be playing off of media. We'll be playing off of an SD card of a video I recorded earlier. And then there's HDMI, which we didn't plug into, but let's go into settings for a second and check this out. Now you can see here that there's no automatic keystone correction for the settings menu, which shows you that this is at an awkward angle. Now if I was to lift this up and flatten it out, we can get this all perfectly flat together. So if the projector is perfectly horizontal, the settings screen will be accurate. And this is a good way to gauge if you want a straight shot with the unit. But we're going to go ahead and set it down and utilize that, that keystone, automatic keystone correction feature. So we can go into management, and then you can set the language, the time, the firmware version, uh, whether or not you want to upgrade USB or OTA. I have no idea what that means. Default mode, mirror and stream apparently is the go-to that you want to use. 
and you can reset all your options there. We'll go back and check out image. Brightness is already up at seven. We can lower it down if we want to save battery life. So if it's dark enough out, you can play around with that and get that just right. Um, I prefer it nice and bright, as bright as it can get, especially because I can keep it plugged in. But if you do not have a power supply handy and you want to get the most time out of your video watching experience, keep your brightness down. So projection mode, we can go front or rear. This is very useful if you want to do reverse, which is when instead of projecting onto a screen, you project behind the screen onto the screen. That way, uh, people, when they walk in front of your movie, you don't see this effect. You can walk right up to the screen, and because it's not being projected from the front to the screen, and it's be projected from the rear, the image will be flipped accordingly, and that's just a little cool feature. I can't wait to use that when I get a proper screen. Angle adjust, keystone, aspect ratio, auto and full, 4-3. 16-9, L-Box, Auto. I'm gonna keep it on Auto just because I'm happy with what that's doing. Digital Zoom, oh, that's nice. We can move in and out. Color temperature, normal, cold, warm. That's nice. The wall color, this is cool. So my wall is actually yellow. This one says white, this one says light yellow. So it's a slightly different shade. A light blue, pink, if you have a pink wall, dark green, and back to white again. I'm just gonna keep it on white for good measure. Oh, okay, this will connect directly to my Wi-Fi. If I wanna to connect to Wi-Fi, I can go there, and maybe I can watch movies right off of my Wi-Fi connection. But I'm more interested in going right off of this SD card we have in there. So let's watch a movie. Oh, there's the video we wanna watch. It's called Acaso. Hey, this is kind of weird. I'm on my wall right now, and it's a little dark in this room, but I think I'm showing up okay. Can you hear me all right? This is just the speaker from the Acasa unit that's projecting this image on the wall right now. Now it looks like the audio and, and video are not synced up on this, this which, is, which is strange. My Bluetooth speaker to see what the difference is in the sound between the two. Here's the Bluetooth speaker. JBL Charge 4 blaring the sound for this portion of the video. Just to give you an idea of how you can amp up your sound while using this projector screen. So that's neat. Well, I have to say, I didn't really like how the audio and the video weren't quite meeting up on that. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a different SD card here and test out a movie that I've loved ever since I was a child. All right, and we'll plug in the sound system to get a better quality sound. Let's see what movie we have in store today. Oh, I spoiled it. It's a classic from 1985. Now, I hope that the audio and the video line up good for this. So that was a little disappointing, I won't lie. I'll have to figure out how to fix that later. Now this isn't the highest quality copy of the Goonies. Lunch time. The longer you animals bark, the colder your lunch gets. Definitely a little jerky, but that's okay. This is a lower quality copy of the movie. So we'll go ahead and pause right here because I don't want to get in trouble for copyright, but, but I'm very happy that the, at least the audio and video was lining up properly for that. Well, it's time to turn these lights back on. Scene transition. Here we are, we're back. Yeah, I guess I'm a little disappointed with the audio and the video not lining up with the video that I took to uh, show you how this projector works. I'm not sure if there was some sort of error on my part or if there's a fault in the projector itself or if this is just a really old SD card. I'm not a doctor, I'm just an amateur videographer here on YouTube. But I'm very happy with the product so far. I mean, you get what you pay for. It was only a couple hundred bucks, which is a lot of money, I know, but it's gonna suit my needs perfectly fine, I can tell that already. Even with all the lights on, you can still see the screen on the wall. It's not that bright. But once again, though, if I want to transfer artwork onto a surface and blow it up, I can do that just fine with this level of lighting. It'll work out perfectly fine for my needs. And you can't beat, look at that portability. This thing's super lightweight and was flashy with the, whoa, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that hurts my lens or not. I probably shouldn't play around with that. Once again, I'm not a doctor. I don't know how this technology works. But to turn it off, you just go back to the switch, push back to power mode. Now it's in power bank mode and then I turn it back to the other switch. And now the power bank mode's off and the whole unit is off altogether. And that focus on the side came in handy. So if you're further back or closer up, you can always adjust the picture. And that automatic keystone correction feature is pretty awesome. 
So yeah, all in all, I'm happy with the product so far. I've only played around with it just for a day and a half or so. And I'm hoping to take advantage of this weather when it gets really nice outside, physically distance and practice slackline walking during twilight hours. And then once it gets darker, we can bring this outside and hook it up to the speaker and shoot it against a wall and, and watch some movies outside. Physically distance, of course. But all right, folks, that's all I have for you today. I just want to do a little unboxing of the Sakaso video projector, mini video projector, the Focus model, Focus mini video projector by Akaso. I don't know if it's necessarily for everyone out there who wants a nice portable projector, but once again, for my needs, I think it suits just fine. Anyways, I've been playing around with this video stuff way too late tonight. I gotta get some sleep. I got a 16 hour shift ahead of me tomorrow, and I got a lot of house hunting to catch up on. If I wanna get this house sooner than later, I gotta do my own due diligence and research more homes. And if you're new to my channel, please know that I plan on posting every single day this year of 2021. And I have posted at least one video every single day of this year so far. Every Sunday I post another tutorial on something to do with the circus and the flow arts. So if you are interested in learning how to juggle, or juggle clubs, or contact juggle, which is a fancy word for saying that thing that David Bowie did in the labyrinth, or if you want to learn how to spin things on your fingers, like trays, or books, or ring binders, flat surfaces in general, or if you want to learn how to play with the devil sticks, then it might be a good idea for you to check out my playlist section here on my channel and click the playlist that's entitled Circus and Flow Arts Basics. These tutorials are specifically made for people who don't know how to get started with learning this stuff and it teaches you the fundamental basics, the building blocks that are necessary in order to learn more advanced techniques in these fields. Well anyways folks, thanks for watching this video to the end. I appreciate it very much. I hope you come back and check out what's cooking further down the line too. So until that comes, remember to keep safe, be well, stay humble, and peace.